Eh, bit of a rough one yesterday on the Power 5, but still a 15-8 and eight run the last five days. That's how good things had been prior to Thursday. Also, that one winner we gave yesterday, the Phillies, that was my lone client release. So I'm a, on a 6-1 and one run over at wagertalk.com the last three days. Doing well over there, doing well on the show. Now let's get into Friday's slate, starting with Major League Baseball. As a reminder, you can always smash that like button if you're in agreement with me on these or just in general want to show your support for the show. I appreciate that. All right, number one, Rangers team total over three and a half versus the Yankees. This is around minus 130. Tremendous scheduling edge here for the reigning World Series champs coming into this series. They were off yesterday. Now, they did use the off day to visit the White House, but the Yankees have played three games the last two days. Doubleheader Wednesday, followed by a 9-4 loss last night to the Angels. So the the pinstripes have been a lot busier. Uh, The Rangers offense is a bit more trustworthy on the road. And I believe they can get to Carlos Rodon, who has been a very streaky pitcher in 2024. Yes, he comes in having won three consecutive starts. However, let's look back a little further. June 15th to July 14th, he was 0-5 with a 9.67 ERA in that stretch. I think we see bad Rodon tonight between facing him and the Yankees bullpen. Three and a half is a number that should not be hard to clear for Texas. They're guaranteed to come up to bat at all nine innings after all. Number two, Braves-Rockies under 11. You know it's Coors Field, but consider in the Rockies last series, which was here at home, versus the Mets, none of those three games saw more than 10 total runs scored. And the Mets, they've got a lineup that typically scores a lot of runs on the road. Under still hit all three games of that series, though, and the Braves lineup does not scare me. They scored five on Wednesday. Okay, I gave you. Braves team total over uh, on the Power 5 on Wednesday. So that was a winner. And then they scored seven runs yesterday, but they lost both games. They've now lost five in a row, has Atlanta. On the road, though, okay, that they were swept at home by Milwaukee. Now you're on the road. Fourth worst batting average in baseball. Bottom third in WRC+. Yes, Coors is the most hitter-friendly environment in all baseball. We all know that. But it's baked into the number, obviously. The good news for the Braves is that they're going to be sending out a righty, Grant Holmes. The Rockies are 29th. uh, That's next to last, ahead of only the White Sox. In WRC+, Plus against righties this season. Look for this game to stay under 11 between the Braves and the Rockies. Atlanta just not hitting right now. And Colorado's offense uh, not as prolific at Coors as they've been in years past. Number three, Mets Mariners over 7.5. Now, on the flip side of Coors, T-Mobile Park in Seattle has arguably the most pitcher-friendly park this season. The Mariners, number one in run prevention, but 29th in runs scored at home. However, we're going to focus on the Mets side of things for a bit. I just talked about how they score more on the road than at home. In fact, they're number four in runs scored on the road. They're facing Bryce Miller, who gave up four runs and four and a third his last time out, which was here at home. Then you got Jose Quintana starting tonight for the Mets. He's due for some serious regression. Expected ERA over five. That's more than a full point higher than his actual ERA. This total is too low. We're going under at Coors Field. We're going over at T-Mobile Park in Seattle today on the Power Five. Mets Mariners over. All right, nothing from me on the NFL preseason today, but I do have two CFB win totals I'd like to share with you. Uh, These are uh, some win totals I had written down uh, to share earlier in the week. I've had so much else, though, I wanted to give out that these kind of were put on the back burner. I don't want to wait any longer, so you're getting them today. A couple Big 12 teams going over their win total. Up first, Iowa State over 7.5 wins. I think the Cyclones have a legit shot to get the Big 12 championship game this year. Texas and Oklahoma, they're gone. They're out of the picture, so the league's a bit more wide open. The presumed favorite in the Big 12 is now Utah, who's a newcomer. That's interesting. Uh, The two strongest holdovers, at least, uh, in terms of the odds, are Kansas State and Oklahoma State, but not far behind. Do not sleep on what Matt Campbell has going on in Ames, guys. He is very high on this roster, and for good reason. 19 starters back, including all five offensive linemen. And quarterback Rocco Beck, he had a coming out party last year. Remember, he wasn't even supposed to be the starter coming into the year. There was that gambling scandal the program was dealing with. A lot of upheaval. Beck, though, he had a 16-5 to TD to INT ratio in Big 12 play last season. He can get the ball down the field. I think this offense is going to be way more explosive than in years past. Iowa State won seven games last year despite all that turmoil. They're going to be better this year. Trust me on that. And I think they've got the legit shot to make the Big 12 championship game, like I said. So Iowa State over 7.5 wins. Another, the other Big 12 team I like to go over 7.5 is UCF. Their first year in the Big 12, 
they took the expected lumps. There were the expected growing pains, the struggles. The Knights go three and six in conference play in 2023. But they were plus 21 yards per game. They were competitive. Of the four newbies to the Big 12 last season, they were definitely the most competitive team. They were better than BYU, Houston, or Cincy. And I think UCF is, out of those four, the team most poised to make a jump in 2024 in the league standings. They bring K.J. Jefferson over from Arkansas to play quarterback. That's going to unlock Gus Malzahn's offense. Five Big 12 home games. That's key because the last seven years at the bounce house, UCF has a straight-up record of 39-5. and five. I would make the Knights a dark horse to contend for a spot in the Big 12 championship game. So we'll go UCF over 7.5. Let's now recap the Power 5, shall we? One, Rangers team total over three and a half. Two, Braves Rockies under 11. Three, Mets Mariners over seven and a half. Four, Iowa State over seven and a half wins. Five, UCF over seven and a half wins. You can let me know what you think of those selections by commenting down below, whether it's positive or negative. I want to see your feedback. I always appreciate it. And then you can head on over to my page, wt.buzz slash bp. Like I said earlier, I am on a six and one run with my top selections for my clients over the last three days. Seeing it well on the diamond. Uh, of course, we had that big 5% win on Tuesday with Colorado, plus one and a half against the Mets. Didn't even need the plus one and a half. They took the game outright. Let's keep it going. Don't forget about that two-for-one special. Time is running out to take advantage. When you buy the next two months, we'll throw in the rest of August free. So you'll get all of my plays through the end of October. NFL preseason, NFL regular season, college regular season, soccer, rest of Major League Baseball. It's all there for one great price. One more time, that's wt.buzz slash bp. If you're not already subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Click that bell. You get instant alerts when this show drops. And don't forget about the morning wager with myself and the always fiery Mark Zinno. That will be available as well on the YouTube channel. Talk to you guys again soon. Until next time, let's cash some tickets.